Hello, I'm Mark Bassingthwaite. I'm the risk manager here at Alps, and welcome to the latest episode of Alps in Brief, the podcast that comes to you from the historic Florence building in beautiful downtown Missoula, Montana. And boy, do I have an interesting guest today that uh, I just, the more I learn and, and, and get to visit with her, it's just wow. Uh, my guest today is Jackie Taylor. And where I first heard about Jackie and, and learned a bit about her story is from a very, very interesting podcast. And Jackie, it's on, uh, what is, it's C30, what's the platform? C13. C13, thank you. Yes, C13. But the podcast series, and it's about 10 episodes, roughly, what, 9, 10 hours, I guess, mm -hmm. called Relative Unknown. I mean, I'm not going to... I, we're not going to sit here and talk about everything that's in this podcast, but I, I will tell you folks, it is worth a listen. So if you have some time and you're driving to the office or taking a plane somewhere or just out for a run, I strongly encourage you to, uh, to take a listen to this. So Jackie, welcome. It's such a Thank pleasure. You. Um, could you take just a couple of minutes and, and share for our audience um, a little bit about you? You know, what, what is important from your perspective that, that you think these folks would, would want to know? Mm -hmm. um, basically, my name, I'm Jackie Taylor. I was put into the Federal Witness Protection Program at seven years old in 1982. My father was a Hells Angel and he turned on the club and he turned informant and helped them uh, prosecute a few individuals that were guilty of some crimes back in the 70s and 80s. Um, now I am basically an advocate of grown children of witness protection that are struggling with their identification issues, um, mental health, things like that. Um, you know, in a nutshell, I, I can't, because of my documentation, because my documentation has never been rectified from the U.S. Marshals, I cannot leave the country, I cannot buy a house, I cannot go to college. There's a lot of things that I cannot do. However, I am okay. I will be okay. I've been okay for almost 50 years, but these things still are not right. I am not the only person that is struggling with identification issues that is a grown uh, an, an adult that was put on witness protection as a kid. Um, I am not the only person. I've had a lot of people reach out to me now, and now I'm advocating for them as well. I think that's awesome. It, Thank it's, you. It, it's, uh, <laughs> it is an overwhelming task, I can I imagine. You're know, just, you're, you're fighting a system, but somebody needs to do it. it it's, it's, I am. I, Thank I, you. I, I, taking the mantle on is, is, you know, God bless, good for you. Thank you. That's backed up on sort of the story. Mm -hmm. um, so you're in this witness protection program and I don't want to spoil too much of, of you know, but you're, you don't have a relationship with your father and you're, I don't want to tell the whole story about your father again. I, I, I just want them to you listen to the to podcast. Listen to you the have podcast. to listen to the podcast. It really is worth it, folks. <laughs> but you, you are obviously... Um, gone public. You okay. are no longer, you, you, you've outed yourself, if you will. Yes. And am I remembering correctly, this occurred around the age of 19? Um, no, actually it occurred in 2000, 2008 and 2009 is when oh, the first I'm, article went out. Yes. What, what brought you to that point? You know, I've struggled with um, issues with my identification uh, since, actually, since I was a little girl, getting my my mom couldn't get us into softball. She had to beg and plead. Um, I tried to get a marriage license um, back in '96, and I was denied because I don't have a birth certificate. Um, getting into college was a struggle. Thank God, I knew somebody on the admissions board that I babysat for, and the Patriot Act wasn't in effect yet because that was in '95. So I've, I've struggled with things over the years, but now I was, a, I was at a place where I was okay, and then my children's health care got canceled. They were on Medicaid. Yeah. My children's health care got canceled because I could not produce a birth certificate that the marshals would, I, I was never given a birth certificate. So, you know, I don't have one. There's not a way that they could get me one. The judge refused to sign 
off on my family getting individual birth certificates. So, so, is so it, started, this... it started affecting my children. Okay. And so it's a point of um, just saying I've had enough I've had of, a, yeah, of the uh, inefficiencies, the, yep. uh, all the things in yep. terms of the federal marshals. And Trying whole... to call and, okay, right. call this number. We call this number. Okay, write a letter to this. Make sure that you send it certified um, or registered mail. It has to be signed for that you, so that you can prove that it you know, got there. I can't tell you how many letters I sent. I can't tell you how many calls I've made. And, you know, there's just been no help. Nobody right. seems to care. So when these people, and it's me, my sister, and my brother, we've all had these issues. But then when, you know, it starts affecting our children. And now right. I have other people reaching out to me because I just went public. Right. Like, hey, I'm having the same issues too. Right. Of course, I have to vet these people out and make sure that they're legit. So I make them tell me, you know, what what transpired, what city was it out of. And then I, you know, I verify, okay, this did happen. Yeah. So tell me your story. So these other people are reaching out and they're having these problems too. Yeah. So, you know, I'm not the only person. My family's not the only yeah. people out there that are struggling. And just to make sure everyone in the listening audience here is, is fully aware of, of where these struggles come from. I mean, understand, folks, when you enter witness protection, Jackie Taylor was not born Jackie Taylor. That's her name after going into witness protection and all right. the family, I think brother, you have a brother, sister, I have right? A brother yeah, and, and a sister. Mother mm -hmm. and you know, everybody's name uh, was changed. And no one is given sort of solid, consistent um, identification, you know, the, things that all of us take for granted. You right. know, it's we've got the original birth certificate, we've got the social security card, the passport, and, and all the spellings that you were sharing in a, in a presentation right. here that, you know, it's it's a, I think it was, you said a Wisconsin, Wisconsin social, security, social security, number. security number. And it's just... Yeah, with, um, on my passport, it states I was born in Cleveland. Okay. So that red yeah. flags, yeah. you know, certainly if I want to go get a home loan, you know, that's a red flag. Yeah. Well, why do you have a Wisconsin social security number? But it says you're, you know, there's... I'm throwing flags, and that's <laughs> yeah. that's not that's yeah. not a good I thing. I can't imagine. I've been uh, stopped at TSA, um, oh, you know. And how yeah. do you explain this stuff? Yeah. I got pulled over once, yeah, and they couldn't find me in their system at all. Okay, I, w I was arrested a couple of times. I know I'm in the system, <laughs> but they couldn't find me, that's and they so asked me who I really was. So that's happened yeah. to a couple of other folks yeah. that I've talked to as well. Yeah. Um, right now, I no longer exist. This is something I didn't talk about. I no longer exist with the Social Security Department. Oh wow! I just recently found that out. Oh my god! So now, now what? You yeah. know? I mean, it's certain things. Am I gonna die? No. Does my life suck? No, because I make sure that it doesn't, even with yeah. all of these roadblocks. Yeah. But does it impede my civil rights? You know, I've worked since 1989 when I was 14 years old. I've paid my taxes. Mm -hmm. I've worked for 35 years now. Right. I've paid my taxes. Yeah, and you deserve this. I deserve oh, my absolutely. basic rights yes. as an American yeah. citizen. Yeah, yeah. That's all we're asking yeah. for. And I, in my mind, boy, that's not a lot to ask for. It, it's, it really it's, isn't. Yeah, you know? it, it's, it's something you guys are all owed and deserved. Entitled and to. It, and, well, you know, yes. especially that yes. we were... I honestly, I agree with we, you on yeah, that. We yeah, we were born into this. Yeah. We didn't ask for it. Right. Nor did we even ask to be born, period. Yeah. You know, but we were. We were yeah. put into witness protection as children. And that's, just mm -hmm. to make it clear, that's all. That's the only people I'm really advocating for. Yeah. We're children of, grown children of WITSEC. Yeah. If you're an adult and you're put into WITSEC, you made your bed, you can lie mm -hmm. in it. Do I think that they need to be looked after too, just like... You know, my father needed to be looked after. Mm -hmm. Yes. But. Is when you made this decision, so out of frustration, and, and your, your initial step was... If, in call the newspaper. Of, call the newspaper because <laughs> you were not getting any responses anywhere else. And so yeah. that really goes public. Uh, and there's been a lot of, um, a lot of traction since mm -hmm. that time mm -hmm. in terms of your story. Uh, not the least of which is against this podcast, but there's lots of other things uh, that have happened and, and are in the works even now. Mm -hmm. But when you um, reached that point, was there, it's just frustration alone and you just got to do something? Or was that Absolutely. balanced of, you know, I, I would think just even some concerns about coming out of witness protection and you know, in terms of just safety and things. Did that I didn't feel in danger back okay. then. No. Um, 
I had ran into some Hells Angels back in, I believe it was 94 or 95, and um, I was told that I was not in danger. Um, it was just a random event, a uh, random occurrence that we yeah. ended up at the same social gathering, and uh, I was told that I was not in danger. So was I nervous about the Hells Angels fight? No, I wasn't worried for my security and my safety, yeah. But you're where you said was it out of pure frustration? It was out of pure frustration. Yeah. Absolute. I I spent that entire day when I got the letter from the state of Montana saying that they were canceling my kids' Medicaid. I spent all day on the phone, um, talking, calling different congressmen, calling different senators, calling different, you know, people, uh, politicians in the city of Billings, and the buck was passed. The buck was passed. The buck was passed. Uh, John Tester's office is the only. Um, office I ever had any luck with and I, I thank you for that John Tester we need to get back in touch um, but nobody else wanted to do anything and our current governor at the time couldn't do anything okay. you know it was just passing the buck so right. out of frustration that night I, I called the Gazette so you this, so this has happened you know it's been a little what 14 years 12 14 mm -hmm. years since initially it's one thing again to make this decision out of anger, out of frustration, mm -hmm. and gosh darn it, you're going to do something about mm -hmm. it. You haven't run out of steam. No. What What is driving you? Um, you know, every couple of months I get a new person or case that reaches out to me that's struggling. Um, just a few weeks, well, a couple months ago, I had somebody reach out, a brother and sister that um, were put, <laughs> I call them the kids because they're 27, 26 and almost 30. They're not kids, but they were born children into witness protection. They're currently being threatened with, um, if you don't follow the rules, if you talk out of, if, if you tell anybody, if you gripe about the program, we're going to deport you back to your country and oh you will be killed. So that's that's not a way that needs it needs to be yeah, handled. Well, that's not right. It's yeah. not right. It I'm worried right. about these kids. Like I said, am I going to die because, you know, I don't have a birth certificate. I don't have my passport um, current. Am I going to? No. But these kids, these kids are afraid um, of their shadows. Um, mm. I just got a text from the sister today saying, I have never felt safe in my life. That... That brings me to tears a little bit because yeah, nobody I, I should feel like that. Yeah, I can't. I can't imagine. And she's just a kid, and she was born into this because yeah. of what her parents did, you know, before she was born, and and you know, afters, and she did. She did, none of those children do. None of us deserve to um, be swept under the rug and be told that we need to behave and obey, mm -hmm. or we're going to be killed. You know, that's. Yeah. Who can speak for this girl now? Because she's she's afraid of the marshals. I'm not. Right, right. But, you know, I'm not going away. Do I want to work with the marshals now? Yes. I would like to figure out something that we can do together. I have answers. I have solutions. I genuinely care about these people in witness protection. And I cannot say the same for the marshals. Yeah. It just, yeah. it's... You know, and nobody deserves to feel like that. And are we a limited few? Yes. There's only about 10,000 children on WITSEC or grown children like myself. But that's 10,000 people in the United States that are being swept under the rug and have to live a secret, scary life yeah. where we don't have normal rights as yeah. anybody else just because we were born to our parents. Is, is this sort of a, um, and I don't need to take anything away. I think is is there an, an element here of um, healing or making peace with with all the crazy things that have happened in your life? Is it um, trying to add a, a, a purpose? I'm just, no, no. I would say this is just more of a mission that I'm the only you, one who can you should, conquer you and can do it. Yeah, you know, it, yeah. I had a health scare last okay. month oh. and. Um, <laughs> my kidneys started um, not functioning properly because of yeah, yeah. my antidepressant. You know what happens. Yeah, so, okay. switch, you know, I got you got to switch it around. And, yeah. But, you know, I had a very um, 
a dark couple of days thinking, oh my God, I'm going to die. Oh my God, what if this happens? I don't write out my will. Oh my God, who are going to, who, there's nobody else, there's nobody out there that can, that can help these Witset kids. Mm -hmm. What about the Witset kids? Oh my God, if I die, who's going to, who's going to take care of, there's nobody. So I, I wouldn't call it a burden at all. Okay. But I'd like to get on with my freaking life someday. Yeah. And yeah. I can't until this is all rectified. Yeah. yeah. And they start listening. Yeah. And I'm not going away. I'm using every platform I possibly can. Every person that's willing to thank you, interview me for their podcast. Yeah. You know, thank you very much that this is helping yeah. because we're spreading awareness. Absolutely. And people had no idea yeah. Yeah. about how, you know, we live as people in witness protection. You do not get a new house. You do not get a new car. You do not get a briefcase full of money. You don't even get proper identification. Um, if you listen to the podcast, you'll find out where we were actually put in Billings, Montana. And it was the the most nasty hotel that you can possibly imagine. And like I always say, I'm no princess. Yeah. You know, I'll stay at a second rate motel to save money, but I would not stay. I wouldn't put my worst enemy in the hotel oh that they God. put us in. Yeah. It was, you yeah. know, it's, it, it was horrible, and we didn't deserve that. Maybe my father did, but yeah. my mother and my brother and sister didn't deserve that. Yeah, well, that. you're you're the we're second class citizens. Yeah, and but but also just victims that yeah, I'm not sure what the right you know you're innocent victims if, if that makes any sense. Collateral you damage. Know? Yes. Yeah. Maybe that's <laughs> it, it. It's such a such a shame. You know, may I share? And if if. But there are a lot of lawyers that listen to this, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, if anyone had some thoughts or just wanted to become involved, may they reach out to you? I Absolutely, should, may, yes. Is there, if you would like to share some contact information or how they can reach, please feel free. If you want to have them contact us and pass something along, whatever is best for you. I mean, anybody can reach me at any time. I'm Jackie Taylor, J-A-C-K-E-E -E, Taylor. Um, my uh, podcast is Relative Unknown. I have an email, jthood74 at hotmail.com. Um, but yeah, I, I actually need, I, I need to know what to do with these two kids. Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, I didn't get into it too much, but these, there's a lot of other people on my agenda that I'm trying to get help for. But these two kids stand out to me because they were issued two-year work visas. Yeah, the clock's ticking. In the clock's words. ticking on yeah. this, and they're constantly being threatened. Today, today, she was receiving texts from the marshals. Well, things are changing with your two-year work visas, you know, um, and that's what she said. She's never felt safe a day in her life. But I need to know, what can we do for these kids? How do we get them their citizenship? Can we claim political asylum? These are the two that I'm focusing on right now. If anybody's out, you know, listening that... Uh, is interested in getting involved or thinks that they might have an answer to my solution or a solution to my problem or yeah. you know maybe just a suggestion please reach out to me anything I answer everybody I look at every email I look at every message on Instagram Facebook um, it doesn't matter who it is I, I answer everybody and I but I really appreciate this yeah. opportunity to yeah. Yeah. talk and tell my story well and you're welcome our you know, story the I, 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 folks, I mean, you know, this is a, a, a very sort of different focus for the podcast, and we, we like to shake things up around here and, and <laughs> go in different directions. But I encourage you to listen to the podcast. It, it is just a, an interesting, crazy story. But I, I also think at times, you know, I can't go out, at least I feel it, and I think a lot of us feel this, we can't go out and necessarily change the world. It, this is one crazy messed up world right now. We've got right. a war in Ukraine and, you know, and it, at times these kinds of things seem so overwhelming and the temptation is just to bury our head a bit, right. get comfortable and just move along. I like, and what I've tried to do in my own life personally, mm -hmm. you, you I may not be able to change the world, but I can change a little piece of it. Yes, that's you know? exactly and, how and I feel. And it's the small yes. steps. Yes. And, you know, I, I just wanted to share, and I think it's it's an important, there, there's, I never knew any of this. Mm -hmm. I always, and I know that Hollywood. Oh, Hollywood. those lucky guys, yeah, they got a new house. Yeah, they oh, they're just, on <laughs> those lucky guys. No. And we got the pool. Right. Yeah, yeah. Right. That's just not reality. So, 
if any of you out there care uh, to, to, and, and have the time some or some expertise or some insights in in how or if you're bored at three o'clock in the morning there dig. you go here's a good subject dig into this a little bit yeah yeah so it's an opportunity to to make the world a little bit better to, to, to make a difference in small ways uh, in, in terms of what you may be able to contribute um, but the outcome here can be life-changing literally when we right. talk about these two kids. So, folks, I, I hope you found something of value, uh, and I appreciate your listening in. I, again, I encourage you, um, Relative Unknown, it's, it's, I, I've just enjoyed it. I've been sharing it with friends and family, and we're all having, having just like wow wake-up moments. But uh, all right, I'll let you get back to the <laughs> office, get back to your day. Have a good one. Bye-bye. And, oh, yes, Jackie, oh, yes. thank you. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, thank you for having me. You're most welcome. And thank you, Paul Zuckerman. I love you. Bye-bye, all. <laughs>